it's long. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Bishop. It's the Lord's day. <laughs> and we should be glad to rejoice. And before we do anything, we ought to make sure that as we pray, but as we learn and enjoy learning, there are a lot of people out there, right, especially down in Texas. People don't have heat, people don't have food, people don't have any power at all. And the Lord blesses us when we express and when we do our concern for others. So we want you to remember in your prayers, all those people out there struggling, all those people who are looking to stay warm, things that we might have taken for granted. And so we thank God for this, this program. Time is of the essence because there's so much we want to, to, uh, to do. Uh, so um, we want to present our pastor, Pastor Joseph Moore of the Resurrection Church. We, we decided to do this as a team. My friends from Plainfield, my Dr. Celeste Johnson up in Connecticut, other people who are joining. And there's quite a people, few numbers are just going up here. But we thank God for each and every one of you. We thank God for technology that we can talk to each other across lines. Someone said, said Spelman, you give God credit for everything. I sure do. And this is a blessing for us to be uh, together from so many places, and yet share the word of God. At this time, Pastor Moore. You have to unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. God bless you, uh, Dr. Spellman and uh, people of God. We just want to say praise the Lord to you on this evening. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. So I want us to go before the throne of grace this evening, thanking God for gathering us together in the name of Jesus. So Father God, we come before you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, thanking you for this day. Thank you for this evening, Lord God. God, we thank you for having therefore obtained help from God. We continue this day. And God, we thank you from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Your name is worthy to be praised. So God, we thank you that as we come together, oh God, you told us to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman need to not be ashamed by rightly dividing the word of truth. God, I'm so glad that as we come together tonight and as we explore into the scripture and explore into our place as a great people of God, Father God, we are uh, using the word of God, which is our foundation to let us know that any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. So God, we thank you, Lord God, that you have established us to be a great people and a great people in the kingdom. God, because we fear you, we trust you, we reverence your name, Lord God. So God, we know in this time and these last and evil days, God, you have called us to do great exploits in the name of the Lord. So God, we thank you for every word that we hear. God, that it would take uh, a root in our heart, God, this word, this engrafted word, Lord God. It's not going to just be knowledge, Lord God, but it's going to be spiritual knowledge and revelation that we can receive, Lord God, so someone will cry out, what must I do to be saved? Lord God, so we thank you for it. We praise you for it. We uh, thank you for Dr. Spellman, amen, his lovely wife, his ministry. And God, we pray that uh, that you will continue to anoint him, Lord God, to pour out unto us, Lord God. Oh God, so we will continue to hold, oh God, to the foundations of the truth and of the gospel. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray, amen, amen, hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Um, I, I have uh, this evening, once again, I just want to say uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Spellman, uh, for uh, sharing 
sharing this great knowledge with us. I just want to take a few moments. I just want my wife to, to say praise the Lord to everybody as we are here gathered in this Zoom. Amen. Just to praise the Lord with the wonderful people of God in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everyone. And I'm looking forward to this evening. It's always wonderful when the saints of God gather together and to, to learn more about the word. So I look forward to, to this evening. And um, uh, also great to see, it's wonderful to see each and every one of you come together, whether it's by phone or by video. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Love you all. Amen. Amen. So praise the Lord for that. And we uh, thank the Lord. Uh, <clears throat> this evening, we have a, a, a church ministry, RKM, uh, GBC, Greater Bethel Church. Also, uh, we have a portion of the morning church. That's our uh, uh, prayer ministry of 6 a.m. in the morning, uh, Monday through Friday. I think I, I think I've seen many of them on so, so we just, we're just glad to come together in Jesus' name. And being that it is um, Black History Month, um, which we know Black history is every day, but being that it is Black History Month, I'm going to ask, I have my, um, my very own sister uh, that's on uh, this evening, uh, Deacon Arlethea Kelly from the Agape Christian Ministry, Patterson, New Jersey. Um, she's going to sing our... Uh, uh, Negro National Anthem, the Black National Anthem, lift every voice and sing. Amen? Amen. Good evening, everyone. Dr. Spellman and Pastor Moore and to all the beautiful saints of God. Far on 
the way thou who has by thy mind let us into the light keep us forever in the path we pray oh and let our feet stray from the places our god where we met thee let our hearts drunk with the wine of the world we forget Amen. 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 Thank, thank you, Arlethea Kelly, for giving us that beautiful rendition. Beautiful. And we praise God. It's all right to give God some praise. We, we know we're getting oh, yeah. ready to get into the teaching, but it's all right to tell God thank you. It's all right to clap your hands. Tell him hallelujah. We praise him. Amen. We thank God for bringing us thus far. Amen. In Jesus' name. As I said, we are a great people. We're not trying to get great, but we are great already, and we thank God for his greatness in us. So back to the hands of our capable leader, uh, Dr. Spellman. In Jesus' name, we are excited, and we are ready, man, to hear from the word of the Lord and the man of God. Thank the Lord again. Oh, it's such wonderful to see so many um, who have Bonded. I'm glad to see my friend Dr. Celeste Johnson. I just see so many of you. If I start, uh, uh -huh. we we'll take time. But I want to give honor to my first lady, the lady of my life. Uh, happy two years. God put us together. I just want her to greet you, and then we will go right into our class. Lady Spell. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. We greet you in that wonderful name, Lord Jesus Christ. And we want to take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you to our joint Bible Black History Seminar tonight. And we certainly hope you enjoy yourself. And I don't want to prolong the service any longer or our class any longer. I'm just so delighted to be here and to see Pastor and First Lady Moore and Dr. Johnson, as well as so many of you out there. Thank you for joining us. And with that, I'm gonna turn it all back into the hands of Bishop Spellman, who will take us further. God bless you. Uh, we move into our lesson. And uh, we're going to try to move quickly someone's microphone is on. Um, we're going to uh, try to move as quickly as we possibly can, but we're delighted this joint Bible seminar tonight. Uh, Macedonia Church of Christ and Resurrection Church got together. We just want to learn more about God. I feel like Apostle Paul. I know nothing except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Oh, I want to be like John the Baptist when he said, I must decrease, but he must increase. We've got to let space in for the Lord to teach us. So this special Zoom seminar, and we hope this is not the last. We've been doing a number of seminars and we want to do things together. But tonight we're talking about the people of color in the Bible. We bring you greetings from the Macedonia Church at 569 Broadway right here in Newark. It was Marcus Goffey who said, are people without the knowledge of their past history or their origin and culture. It's like a tree without roots. That's a good quotation because in my history, in our Pentecostal history, oh, I find such inspiration in the people who have crossed our paths. They don't go in and haven't been in the New York Times. We don't see them on the screen. These were people 
who are heroes to us, our history. But let's start out with some general assumptions and we're going to move very quickly uh, the frame of reference of this entire presentation is the King James Version of the Bible. All conclusions are based on the scriptures. We just don't think or come up with a theory. We're dealing from the scriptures. And the world by no means is all black, all white, but a diversity of souls and a unique individuals created by God. I teach my students, you're talented, you're gifted, and there's no one in the whole world like you. And whenever we talk about Ham or the sons of Ham, the Canaanites, uh, we're usually talking about people of color. But we don't want to make that the main issue because the Lord does not see race. God looketh on the heart. And so tonight, the Lord has blessed us with a skin protection. Uh, melanin is a um, skin protection against the ultraviolet rays of the sun. And uh, we, are, we are brown and we are many shades, but that has been a protection. This woolly hair up here is really a protection against the ultraviolet rays of the sun. And I've been fortunate enough to travel to Israel and to Egypt nine times. I got off that bus and by 1030 in the morning, it's 100 and it, the temperature is up there around 120 degrees. So the Bible is our scriptural documentation. The fact that uh, the physical humanity of the Lord Jesus Christ, I mean, we are, uh, the Lord himself was a mixture a lineage that really came from four black women. And irrespective of what color the Lord Jesus Christ was, and there's a lot of controversy and everyone wants to talk about that. Bottom line is he came, he suffered, he died, he saved our souls, he rose, and he's coming back again. So four in our scripture, 316, John, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, didn't talk about race, but whosoever believe it. And so the bottom line is that you, we all are masterpieces of the Lord. There's no one like you in the whole world. You are a machine. The more uh, biochemistry you study, the more biology you study, the more physiology you study, the more you study about space and our, uh, the gravity and all the systems, you see that God has put this together just for us that we might be saved. And you are a masterpiece and you are an essential part of that. You were not, just didn't float into this world. We're like Jeremiah. Uh, the Lord told him, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. And he had to tell Peter, who really wanted to talk about salvation for the Jews. But then in Acts 10, 34, then Peter opened his mouth and said of the truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. In the book of Acts 10th chapter, every nation that feareth him, all work is righteousness is accepted with him. And this word, I think this scripture here uh, does it all, which is found in Acts the 17th chapter in the 26th verse. And he made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth and have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. So uh, the scriptures, we can go on, uh, but we want to show you that the Lord didn't make us black. He made us so that we could be protected from the geological realities that we found ourselves. And uh, we have a problem in this world, especially in this country, it was in South Africa and what have you. People look at color, man looketh on the outward appearance 
but God looketh on the heart and whosoever will. So uh, there have been many, many books written. Uh, Dr. Theron uh, Williams wrote a book and he called it, The Bible is Black History. And there's so much history there. People ask, what race was Christ? That's what they get hung up on. And it doesn't matter what color people are in the Bible. Skin color is meaningless. The fact is, he came, he died. He gave us the gift of the Holy Ghost. And if you can't feel him down on the inside, because that temple lives in you, and it's not about race, it's about our faith and how he looks on our heart. So uh, he didn't make, there's no race to the armor of God. I don't care what color you are, you must wear your helmet of salvation. You must have your sword of the spirit. You must have your shield of faith. And you go out every day armed for victory, not as a black person, not as a white person, but as you're armed for God. And it doesn't matter what color you are. And he, it doesn't matter to us. He's our savior. He's our healer. He's our protector. He's our way maker. So look at you. Here you are. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. For if you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So if God has made you, it's he that have made us and not we ourselves. So many great books have been written and you should uh, research them out. You can go on Google. You can go on um, by the bookstore, Christian bookstore, but many of these books are hard to find. Now, Bishop R.C. Lawson, the founder of the Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ, he wrote, wrote a book way back in 1938, The Anthropology of Jesus Christ, Our Kinsman. And his secretary told me uh, about eight years ago that a man knocked on the door on 133rd Street, New York one night, and it was W.E.B. Du Bois. And I was elated because he sought the research and the academic side of Bishop Lawson. Bishop Lawson traveled to the Holy Land 39 times. There are books called Blacks in the Bible. And then there's one I helped Bishop Bonner uh, to write. Uh, it's called Black History from a Christian Scriptural and Achievement Perspective. But we look at black history and from whence we have come. And so we want to give Bishop Bonner his just due. And then there's a man who passed many years ago. I had to write to his family to get credit or get permission to use his charts. But he did a good job, uh, AT8. And he published this panorama Bible study course. And now you can get that at Amazon. So you need to check that out because you can get all of these uh, diagrams. And this is a sharing ministry. This isn't a privately owned ministry. This is a sharing industry. You ought to have a copy of this. But after uh, the flood, the Lord told uh, Noah to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And he had three sons that were delivered after the flood, uh, Japheth, Shem and Ham. And they kind of worshiped together and came together for a little while as into one group. The sons of Ham, who we will talk about extensively, Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan were the sons of Ham. And generally when we talk about people of color or black people in the Bible, we are talking about the descendants of Ham and also of Shem. Japheth dealt with, he went north, and he went north, so therefore he adapted to the climate change. But they got together and they got so egotistical that they said, let us build a tower and let us make a name lest we be scattered. So they tried to build this tower, we call it the Tower of Babel. And God was very unpleased with it, came down and destroyed it, 
and uh, he dispersed them again. Now that tower or that area was a man who was the son, a grandson of Ham, first black ruler of the whole world, so to speak. His name was Nimrod. He was the grandson of Ham and the first world ruler. The Bible speaks of him as a mighty hunter, founder of Babylon. And generally, he's the rebel. He's the first one to rebel against God after the flood. And most of the time when you read in the Bible about Babylon, or it talks about a new Babylon, Bishop Lawson did research on it. We're talking about these descendants, uh, Nimrod. And uh, he married his own uh, mother. And he ruled, and there was this tower he built, and the Lord said, let us confound them and go down and destroy it. They could not understand each other in terms of their languages. So Ham went south to Africa and Arabia, and Shem went as Semitic into Assyria, and then Japheth went north or Asia Minor or into Europe or what we call the countries populated by Caucasian people. And uh, so the Lord scattered them abroad. And remember, I'm just not talking here. I'll give you a scripture. Bishop Lawson used to say, where's your scripture for that son? <laughs> so the Lord scattered them abroad from thence and upon the earth, and they left off to build. Therefore, the name is called Babel, because the Lord did there confound their language. I'm going to kind of quickly because there's so much. But these sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, very important. Shem tra traveled east toward Mesopotamia. Ham traveled south toward Africa. And uh, then Japheth traveled north to Europe. We don't have time to go through all the sons again, but it's found in the 10th chapter of Genesis. And let's face it, people of God, if you live below that line, this line here, the equator line or the line uh, going into below this area, this whole region is very hot. Uh, the sun rays are very strong and the ultraviolet rays of the sun are extremely powerful. So person's skin is brown and it is protected. God built like a sun lotion on you right away because of uh, that which, that protection he gave you with your skin color and with your hair. So these four, uh, Ham had four sons. Cush, who was the founder of Ethiopia. And that's where Nimrod came out of that group. Mizram, Egypt. Canaan, the Canaanites, and we're going to hear a lot about the Canaanites because uh, that was the group that was in Palestine, and uh, they settled in the Palestine area, and even when we were uh, uh, the Jezreelites, we're talking about people of color, descendants of Canaan, the Philistines, and others, and then we have put, who went to sort of like North Africa, but this is the way the map boils down to. It's a beautiful, this is Israel today, but the Canaanites, Shem went this way east. But if you look and you see this, all this orange here, those are people of color or Ham's people. And then you have uh, Shemites as well in Jordan and Kuwait, but this whole Middle East region, which I've been fortunate enough to travel in, you will see people of all colors. But uh, Cush, and sometimes Cush is spelled C-U-S-H. The other times there are ancient maps that show Cush spelled with a K. Anytime you read about Cush or the land of Ham, you're talking about people of color. And let's look at this, the Nubians. Nubia was an ancient region in northern, northeastern Africa, roughly corresponding to modern Sudan. In ancient times, it extended from the southern border of Egypt near 
the first cataract eastward toward the shores of the Red Sea, southward to Cart modern Khartoum, and westward to Libya, the Libyan desert. It was called Kush by the Egyptians and Ethiopia by uh, the people of that area, the land of Kush. So this area was all Ethiopia, it's Ethiopia today. And I've been fortunate enough to travel there. So the sons of Ham, these are people who I took that picture and that man lived in Jericho. So when the Israelites, and we'll talk about uh, the earlier part uh, where we dealt with Abraham and Isaac, but when Moses brought the people out and they came into Canaan, these were all people of color. When they came across the Jordan, they wandered in the wilderness, but they came across the Jordan and they had to deal with the Amaleks and all the people who opposed them, people of color. Do you see people of color in different places? I visited a village in East Africa where the Maasai, the women shaved their heads, they lobed their ears. But these women can walk in the hot sun, whereas European women uh, cannot. So physical appearances change according to geological uh, realities. And you have melan uh, melanin, the pigment that gives human skin its hair, eye, the color in your hair, your eyes. Dark-skinned people have more melanin in their skin than light-skinned people. It, it varies. And as you go up and down toward Europe, uh, you see people of different colors. Melanin provides many benefits to human beings. And of course, God did this. God made us what we are. It is he who have made us and not we ourselves. And I don't care what you say, I just talk, and I'm sure I, don't, yeah, I talk with my wife or any of you. You're glad to be here. God brought you here. You're on a timetable for who he foreknew, he did predestinate. And whom he did predestinate, he called. And whom he called, he justified. Who he justified, he glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for you, who can be against it? And then in Ephesians uh, um, um, 10, we find, 2.10, we find we are his workmanship, created by Christ Jesus unto good works, which he have before ordained that we should walk in them. So people of God tonight, you aren't sent here as a black person, but you were sent here by God on a mission, you have an assignment and you have work to do. And irrespective of where you are now, look at what God has done. There are many black uh, people in the Bible that we can refer to. Uh, I like Samson. Samson came from the tribe of Dan. He was a black man and considered the strongest man that ever lived. If you look at a movie they made of, of Samson, and this black man that played it, he, he broke the necks of lions and, and used a, a jawbone and, and could destroy anything. But at the end, when his hair was cut off, his hair was not his source of power. God had to get his glory. And Samson prayed and brought that temple down on their heads with the power of God, not the power that came from his hair. And so race. Race. I'm so um, kind of upset that it's still such a pre preeminent thing in people's minds. People are afraid that uh, they say 2040 was 2050, but the people of color will outnumber the people who are white, and people are getting afraid over that. And yet, uh, we used, used to use these terms, and uh, the anthropologists used to call a white people Caucasian, uh, people from Asia Pacific. You don't say Chinese, don't say Japanese, but you say Asian Pacific. And then you had Negroid. And the Negroid uh, people, uh, this is in the Webster's Dictionary. I'll just read it real quick. Of or being a human racial classification traditionally distinguished by physical characteristics such as brown to black skin and often 
tightly curled hair, including people indigenous to sub-Saharan Africa. Now look at the last five words, no longer in scientific use. Why? Because this world is such a mixture. It's such a diverse mixture of people. And you've seen the ads on television. I think it's heritage or what have you. And they, I have 20% this and 20% that. You ought to be thankful that you are alive. And God made hmm. us and made me, me with my big nose and my, my black face. And, and I thank God for who I am. Oh, and the book of Isaiah says, I, I, I mean, we are what God says we are. We are who God says we are. And I, as Apostle Paul said, I am uh, that I am, but I am um, the Lord Jesus Christ have made me what I am. Now, Abraham got started as a Shemite down in Ur, this little area here. And he traveled north, but the Lord said, get thee out from that country. You all know the 12th chapter of Genesis. Uh, he didn't argue. He didn't say, I got all my cattle. I, he didn't say, I'm going to leave my father. I want to leave my father. He was obedient, and Abraham was accounted for righteousness. He believed God, man of faith. If God said it, that's the way he did it. He was a great example of that. Now, Abraham quite a, had quite a life. First of all, Sarah became barren. And that was almost like a curse for a woman to become barren uh, in those days. Women would make fun of her. You all know the story of Hannah. And there was Abraham. So uh, they got a little impatient about Abraham having an heir. And he took an Egyptian woman who was Sarah's handmaiden. And uh, Ishmael was born. Now, Ishmael was the father of the Arabs. And then... But that wasn't the line that God wanted. He said, through thy seed. So the seed went through Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, and then there were twins. Remember Beth, Rebecca, Jacob and Esau. I always like to talk about uh, Jacob and Esau because Jacob and Esau, the Lord told Rebecca, two nations are in thy womb, but the older shall serve the younger. And you have an older nature and you have a newer nature. And when it comes down to spirituality, you can't say that the spirit is willing and the flesh is weak. No, that spirit's got to take control of what you do. And that spirit, that new life, that new creature, that new power, that new anointing that's in you has control over anything that the old flesh didn't. And then of course, I don't want to say it, but Abraham, after Sarah died, he married again. And he married a woman by the name of Keturah. And you find many of the Arab nations. And the Lord said he would bless them. He would bless Hagar and her seed. So Arab nations all over the world are, are, are very rich today because, in my opinion, God said he would bless them. So you had Abraham, and then you have Isaac. And then we have Jacob, and we know that Jacob's name uh, was changed to Israel. And he had 12 sons. And uh, those 12 sons we know uh, were Joseph, and uh, we can go through the whole group. But when he was, Joseph went to Egypt, he was dealing with people of color. These are just some of the pharaohs. And students, I study art, I love my art and I see where they, uh, uh, when they unearthed these tombs, this is Tutankhamun. They unearthed his tomb in 1923, a man by the name of Howard Carter. And that's solid gold there. And they unmasked him and they found this treasure and it came to New York not too long ago. That's, and then we have the Queens. And one thing about the art, people of God, when they unearthed these coffins and these tombs, there were the people black people, people who told the story. There was a group that used to go around there, a racist group, call themselves pyramidalists. And they won't, they denied that we could build the pyramids. Oh, they just don't have, they didn't have the technology. You know what they're saying, that we weren't smart enough. I heard another theory where the pyramids were built by people from outer space. 
So I had to tell a friend of mine, it was from outer space and all those paintings and all those tombs of all those black people, you mean tell me, well, that's pretty good. Black people on Mars and all these other planets, they let me alone because they knew, I knew what I was talking about. But during this old kingdom, middle kingdom and new kingdom, this group of black people of color, they were magnificent. The largest existing civilization that has ever been, 3,000 years. I wish I had time to give you the story of Judah and how he, uh, Tamar, uh, played the harlot. But there's a scripture that documents that in Genesis 49, because the Bible says the scepter shall not depart from Shiloh, from Judah, till Shiloh comes. Well, we all know who Shiloh is. The scepter shall not depart from Jerusalem. And so she played the harlot and she had twins, but the line was through Judah. And even when it came down to the sons of Jacob, uh, Joseph's sons, they were received by Israel. So, so all these people, all these kings had to deal with uh, people of color or the Canaanites. They call them people of giants. And uh, Saul, David, Solomon, all the way through. And uh, we are entitled, there's a misnomer going around that the Jews are the chosen special people as if there was some difference in terms of God's feeling toward them. But God wanted to build a nation unto himself so that he could show the world how things operate. Now, I work from a scriptural point of view, and, uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, when they talk, uh, they talk about uh, the Jewish people as being this special chosen group. But I go to the scriptures, people of God, and if you look down there at Galatians 3 and 6, it said, even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore, that they which are of the faith, that's us, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, in thee shall all the nations be blessed. So if I can, my little diagram here, God wanted to build a people that he could show the world, showcase, that he could represent them, he could protect them, he would bless them in all their endeavors. And they showed him the devotion. He wanted a model people to show the world what he wanted to attract the world. But of course, the Jewish people failed him. They were called out. And as you know, we were called out because the church is the ecclesia the called out body of God. So uh, we are called out. And here's my, uh, I love this scripture here. It means so much to me going back again. You're muted, Dr. Spellman. I don't know how that happened. Are we back? <laughs> yeah, no, okay. I saw where I hit the microphone. For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, nor neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be in Christ Jesus, you hear me? If you be in Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. I tell you, nothing like that scripture. And I love that scripture. So there's no difference. So Ham had four sons. 
one of which they then Canaan. Canaan was a major one because the Canaanites, Jezreelites, Philistines, Hittites, all these came from that Palestine area. And then Japheth went north. Now in the book of prophecy, in the last days, we don't have time to go into it, but in the book of Ezekiel, it talks about Gomer, Magog. And of course, we talk about Ham's sons. And we don't see that much about, uh, we don't see that much about uh, Shem. But if you go to Israel today, people of God, you'll find Jewish people. Some have come from Ethiopia and they have come uh, and they live in Israel. Some of them belong to uh, the, uh, the, the law group, the Knesset. Then you'll see these Ethiopians at the Wailing Wall, praying at the Wailing Wall. Uh, he's not wearing a yarmulke, but, but what they do is put their prayers in those cracks. Well, one time with Bishop Bonner, uh, uh, some uh, brother, I don't know what he, he was thinking about, but you put your prayers in there in a little slip, and this brother put a 40-page letter to Jesus in there that disturbed the rabbis because he was trying to gr cram this big letter into those cracks. But there are Ethiopian Israeli citizens, Jews, and they came from the Queen of Sheba. I'll talk about that. Japheth's people went to Europe. And when the Bible, when you talk about prophecy, many times you will see a referring point to the king of the south. That's that, that purple area. That's Egypt and the king of the south. And I don't have time to go through all those scriptures, but the Daniel 11, chapter 5, verse, and the king of the south shall be strong and one of his princes, and he shall be strong above him and shall have dominion. His dominion shall be a great dominion. I had a chance to travel to Ethiopia with Bishop Bonner, and uh, the people, the famine had hit, and we flew up uh, to Wallow, which is a place in the northern mountains of Ethiopia. And uh, that was one of the worst, that was one of the experiences I'll never forget because we both could smell death, deteriorating bodies from their parents who had died from the famine. And we had an orphanage there. And that was quite an experience. But most of us, I want you to see, and I'm gonna show you a little piece of film here, our time's doing all right, of the Queen of Sheba. And the Bible again comes and tells us to get wisdom get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. The principal thing. There's a big difference, people of God, in knowledge and wisdom. I know people didn't get out of the eighth grade, but they were people of wisdom. They were people of power. They were people of discernment. They were people of prayer. And when you become a prayer warrior, you automatically, you become a special vehicle. You can get to God. You, God knows you and he knows your prayer. So, the Queen of Sheba had heard about this exotic wisdom of Solomon. And when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. And she came to Jerusalem with a great train with camels that bear spices and very much gold and precious stones. And uh, and the meat of his table and the city he sat with his servants and the attendants of his ministers. And she said to the king, it was a true report that I heard in my own land. See, I came from uh, Ethiopia, Sheba. I came many, from many miles. And it was a true report that I heard mine own land of that acts 
and thy wisdom. And because of this visit, and I'll show you in a minute, she had a child by King Solomon. But I want to show you something a little different right now. Uh, I do this in my uh, classes. Um, I want to show you in film <laughs> the uh, Queen of Sheba uh, as she comes to meet Solomon. Who are you? What are these magnificent beasts? Where are you going? Hello? Hello, may I present myself? I'm King Solomon, the King of Israel. <laughs> Actually, it's true. I am the King of Israel. Where are you going? To Jerusalem. Ride ahead and tell your king that the Queen of Sheba is coming. Thank you. I'll be sure to tell the king. She is beautiful. <laughs> I certainly hope so. You've asked me that a hundred times in the last hour. <laughs> Solomon of Israel and Judah. I bid you welcome on behalf of all of my countrymen. The fame of King Solomon has spread like a rising tide, even as far as Aksum and Saba. I have crossed the desert for many months to bathe in the ocean of his wisdom and to see his considerable skills on a donkey. I am Makeda, Queen of Sheba. All right, so here are these two cultures that come together. There are things she doesn't know about him, and there are things she learns and teaches him. May please you? <clears throat> yes, very much. We, um, we have no tradition here of dances like these.
<laughs> Look at that beautiful. They are yours. Mine. I bought them for you. A riddle for you, Your Majesty. How can you see through sand? You mean across sand? No, through sand, Your Majesty. These are made from sand. How? Heated until it becomes liquid, then cooled into thin sheets with air from the lungs. What is it called? Galas, from Phoenicia. Fabric from India? Beautiful. Precious wood. Also from India. Mm, it smells wonderful. Peaches, oranges, figs. Cheese. <laughs> Lentil. Millet. Mm. Fine herbs. Ah. Salt from the Dead Sea. Very good in small amounts. A deer, a roebuck, gazelle. This is game now. This, this, this is my favorite. Fatted goose from Egypt. Have you ever tasted goose, Your Majesty? Never. the sweetest thing you have ever tasted. Sugar cane from the Nile. Very good. Mm. But not as sweet as my sugar cane. You've tasted this before. My country is on the Nile. <laughs> it is a very long river, Your Majesty. <laughs> we have grown sugar cane since the beginning of time. <laughs> is this a shrine to Astarte? It is. How can this be allowed? You worship your one god. We're a trading nation. Merchants come from all over the world. I want to get back to, I want you to see, though, uh, the queen and finish uh, showing you the fact that because of our relationship with him, um, because she was able and she learned a lot about him, um, and I gave you those scriptures for that. Uh, then he was he was very impressed, and she was very impressed. Now they had a child while she was there, and his name is Menelik uh, the um, first. And he went to Ethiopia back with her, but then he came back to Jerusalem and was trained in Jerusalem. And they said he even looked like. Uh, King Solomon. I mean, they look very much like him as a father, and people couldn't tell the difference. But this was important, saints, because she took back Judaism to Ethiopia. In other words, she embraced the Lord Jesus Christ. Everywhere you see in the Bible, and they talked about the curse of Canaan. I wish we had more time, but we don't. Well, we could talk about the curse of Canaan. But when the people who were Canaanites, and Ruth was, uh, she, she, she was from uh, that group. And then you had Moses' father, father-in-law. He was a Canaanite. He was a priest. And all the people that embraced God, God took them in. So, so that wasn't a, a group of cursed people. So here's the way it went. The emperor of Ethiopia, who Bishop Lawson knew, as a personal friend and was decorated by the mayor of New York, given the star of Ethiopia, along with Adam Payton Powell, uh, Bishop Lawson was the head of the American Foundation of Ethiopia, and he knew, but 
uh, uh, Selassie, Emperor Selassie, who was deposed by Mussolini, and then he came back. And it was very good friends. Bishop Lawson went to his palace several times. And when he came to America, they say he went out to Bishop Lawson's house. But he claimed to be in the line of Judah. In other words, he claimed to be a descendant of. Then from that, the Jewish people who came back to Jerusalem, there was an Ethiopian who was a eunuch. And he was under the authority of Candice, the queen of Ethiopians. And he was sitting by the road trying to understand the book. I'm trying to hurry up here of Isaiah. And Philip was commanded to go to him. Now, sometimes Philip was preaching and the people were being saved by the hundreds. But sometimes God will have you go and testify to one person. It was one woman who testified to Bishop R.C. Lawson. And she caused uh, not only for him to be saved, but a movement, nine movements have come out. When we get to glory, I want to go and find that woman that she started uh, an organization. So, so it was with this Ethiopian, and he got to understand, and he was baptized and went back, and Christianity came to Ethiopia. And so he learned it, but he didn't understand Isaiah, but then he was taught. So there are many Nubian kings, um, there were many queens, there were people of Judah, Negroid people who, uh, along with the Queen of Sheba and other groups, went to Ham's country. Uh, we hear in the Bible where the Lord was carrying the cross, and there was a man, a Cyrenian, Simon, black man, was told to carry the cross for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we see uh, his presence here in the book and in, in the Bible. So I can go, here's the Noah's curse where there was some disagreement and misunderstanding about that curse because uh, Canaanites who accepted the Lord were brought in. And so I'm going to move forward and give it a little time and then we're gonna open up for questions because there's so much. Now, I'm a person who loves Egypt. That pyramid you're looking at still stands. It is the oldest monument built by black people uh, in 2500 BC. That's 4,500 years ago. It's the only remaining seventh wonder of the world still standing. The Egyptians were great and an ingenious nation. They did things in stone. I saw a picture of Bishop Lawson riding a camel in front of the pyramid. And I made up in my mind, it was so inspirational. So I don't know, I, we call that Camel Pel Penelope, but she was very nice to me and she walked along. The Egyptians gave us so much, uh, they call it the land of Ham, but the Egyptians gave us uh, the calendar as we know it today. They gave us mortuary science methods. They gave us sophisticated ways of hydraulics, moving 70 ton stones. They gave us papyrus paper. We wouldn't have records and certain scriptural records, especially in the Dead Sea, if we did not have Egyptians. They gave us perfumes because they 95% of Egypt is desert and, and mountain, 5% Nile. So they had to be very resourceful and they came up with all kinds of creams and I went to a perfume factory. They just put drops of a compound into alcohol and you had enough uh, perfume for 20 years. There were great engineers, stone cutters, and uh, the city of um, Cairo was a fantastic place. And there's so much to see in Egypt that we don't have time, but from the land of Pharaoh. Uh, even the Lord talked about it in Ezekiel speaking, say, thus said the Lord God, behold, I'm against thee, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. But before he had given them uh, their beauty to whom thou art thus like in glory and in greatness amongst the trees of Egypt. This is the Lord talking about Egypt. And uh, 
I wish we had more time to look at these studies and to see and study people like Ramesses. Ramesses II was supposed to have been the pharaoh when the Israelites uh, came out of Egypt. Many people will say the Israelites built the pyramids. Not so. Great pyramids were built in the Old Kingdom, 2500 BC. That's 2000. Uh, that's uh, 4,500 years ago. So that was not the case. And they survived 3,000 years through all these dynasties. And I was proud to go and to be and even climb up on the uh, pyramid. This one pyramid has two million limestone blocks. It took 200,000 men 20 years to build. It takes up 30 city blocks, 13 city blocks rises 60 stories high and chambers and hallways, all kinds of places, and not a bit of cement is in the pyramids. And they used to hoist these um, um, 70 ton stone, 40 men, and one man would take uh, sticks. The other man would pour water on the sticks to make it slippery. And they put together, the key here was organization. You see, Ramesses II, don't fall off your chair, but Ramesses II uh, fathered 141 children. The women believe if they're, they're being impregnated by the Pharaoh, then their kids would become gods. So uh, it's to the record, he was over 100. He lived to be 92. So we're so grateful tonight, knowing that we only have a really should have tried to do this in two lessons uh, because there's so much more to go. For an example, I wanted to show you how David's lineage, Goliath was a black man. I wanted to show you how so many others. Moses married an Ethiopian woman. But let me run to the, the, the bottom line. The bottom line. A lot of people deal with portraits of Jesus. They want to know what he looked like. And, and the scripture tells us, blessed are they that have not seen and yet believe. You know, there's so much depends on our faith, not our physical eyes. Everyone wants to see. See, we walk by faith, not by sight. We see with our physical eyes, but you really see spiritually with your faith. You hear physically with your ears, but spiritually you hear and God hears your heart. So we walk by faith, not by sight. So all of us tonight have a different portrait of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of us know as a way maker. Some of us know him as a healer of affliction. Some know us as him as a heart fixer and a mind regulator. In other words, all of us have a different portrait. If we were to paint the Lord Jesus Christ, we're not talking about a face. We're not talking, but in faith, this is what he has done for us. And so therefore, when we get to glory, we will see him as he is. The Bible said, doth not yet appear what we shall be. But when he doth appear, we shall be like him. And this is good enough. He's good enough for me. He's been our savior. He's been our boat in stormy weather. He has been our karma of raging seas. He's been the light in darkness. He's been the food in the desert. And you know, everybody's worried about what he looked like. And it doesn't matter what race he was. He saved our soul. And I want us tonight in closing to remember those people who uh, our lineage, those people that may not have had the education that we've had, but they prayed for us. Some of our greatest black history heroes are people who live right in the house with you right now or grew up with you. They prayed for you, had you on their mind, and they took the time to pray for you. They sacrificed. They went without so we could have. And so even Rahab, and I'll end with this point, Rahab's concern was not praying for herself. 
She was praying for her family. Now, therefore, I pray you swear unto me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, and she's a black woman now, that ye will show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token, and that ye will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. So Rahab's prayer should be our prayer, our priority, our family. Those babies have to get through. We have had Dr. King. We know people and heroes who have been energetic people in our lives. But we have to keep the prayer of Rahab, who is a black woman, who says, when you come to the city, spare my family. So tonight, as we go into questions now, we are pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You all listening to me tonight you have a higher calling. God got things for you to do. You're on a schedule. You got to grow into it in many cases, but God's got work for you to do. So at this time, uh, we want to thank God. Let me just pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the opportunity of sharing what little we know. We thank you for everyone's patience. We thank you for the absorption. We thank you for visuals. We thank you for understanding. We ask you to bless us, keep us, bring us together again. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, Pastor Moore, and we, I think we are going to open up for questions. Anyone? We have quite a few people on this line here. <laughs> I want to thank all of you for coming. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. absolutely. Amen. Were you, were you blessed tonight by the word of God and by the teaching from our Dr. Spellman? Well, let's praise God for the teaching and the word of God from our Dr. Spellman. Amen. Pretty informative. And we don't want it just to stay in our mind, but we want it to get into our hearts. So the main point is to get someone to Jesus, someone Amen. to Jesus. get them to change, have a change of mind, a change of heart, a change of direction so they could come to Jesus. So if matter of fact, if there's anyone on the line, we had uh, upwards of almost 90 people or may, maybe more, maybe some came in and out, but uh, perhaps there's somebody that's on the line who do not know the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, um, if you would um, possibly put it in the chat. And if some of you could see it before me, I mean, we want to get that out. And and we want to offer you Jesus. We want to offer you Jesus. What a mm -hmm. what a wonderful time to say, listen, I, I choose Jesus. I'm coming to him. You know, I know we, many of us have come to hear the lesson on Black history, but if you can get out of it that Jesus is Lord, Amen. Amen. He's Lord of all. Amen. And that you want to accept him as your savior. So we want to give you that, extend that invitation to you. And if you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. And we know that God is still a deliverer and he's still a savior in Jesus name. So, so uh, we want to, we want to also take this time for anyone that have questions um, this evening, if you have any questions, um, <laughs> And I know, I know most of the times when we talk about black history and, and the Bible, we, we really, you know, many people really want to know that color thing, <laughs> that color thing was Jesus, this color was Jesus, that color, you know, and it's, um, it's, I love how you broke it down that we walk by faith and not by sight. So if you're coming to Jesus just because he's black, you're coming for the wrong reason. <laughs> right. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. So does anybody have any questions? Praise the Lord. This is Brother Ryan Spellman. Uh, I think it would be very beneficial for Dr. Spellman, Bishop Spellman, to, uh, I noticed a lot of people were taking pictures and recordings. If you would kindly let the people know, we had a tremendous amount of people on this evening, where they could find this video. I know you uh, were recording it. Bishop Spellman. So if you could kindly let the people know so they can go back and retrieve 
any information that they weren't able to attain. Okay, we will. We have two or three things. One, uh, I was dealing with an outline tonight. You know, uh, when you use PowerPoint, you can use notes, and then you can you can put those notes in an outline. Came out to write twelve pages because there was a lot that I didn't cover, but the scriptures are there. So that's one thing. If you request that from us uh, through email, we'd be happy to send it to you. Secondly, uh, we did record it and we will put it on uh, YouTube. Our YouTube channel is Dr. Robert Spellman. And then we have another channel, we call it the Contender for the Faith History Channel. But on anyone, uh, this particular teaching will go on the uh, Dr. Spellman. So YouTube, type in YouTube and then just type in my name. You'll see about 90 teachings there and we are sharing and we don't know much, but we're trying to share uh, somebody and people are coming forward. I'm here to tell you as an old time preacher, I'm getting to be an old man, but I have never enjoyed a ministry and God's blessings and God's newness and all the things he's showing us. And I'm sure I have my friends, Dr. Johnson, I'm surprised. Won't you comment on that? We're just learning all new things about reaching people of God. And uh, I had one the other day at the Bible Institute. Someone said, uh, talked about Denzel Washington. Lord's will next week, we want to do Blacks in Pentecost, but I want to show you uh, Denzel Washington. Now, I don't know if you know it or not, but Denzel Washington has the Holy Ghost. He say, he say he backslid, but there's a YouTube, and then he came back to the Lord, but God baptized him. Now, now you take something, if Bob Spellman or, or, or we go and preach to someone, they'll go along with, yeah, well, that's nice. But if they could see somebody like Denzel Washington, they say, if God can give him the Holy Ghost, he can give me the Holy Ghost. Amen. In other words, Amen. It's a new way of evangelism. We're learning some new things. I don't know, Dr. Johnson, did you want to comment? Well, first, I want to um, express my appreciation to Dr. Spellman and also to Pastor Moore for this combined Bible study on this evening, very informative. And um, before I make any comments, Dr. Spellman, I want to recognize the fact that my pastor is online um, here, or I know that he was here and our youth pastor as well, and several of the members of Urban Hope Refuge Church are, are with you this evening. But I do want to um, take this opportunity to share that this, uh, to me, the miracle of technology and social media um, gives us an, uh, uh, an opportunity to exercise a lot of creativity and share a lot of knowledge that we have uh, through this particular um, medium. And I'm so grateful to it. And I think everybody probably knows by now that Dr. Spellman is not a person who learns, who achieves and keeps it to himself, but it is his goal to share it with others and I'm so happy to be one of those recipients that he shares with. Thank you so much for having us this evening. And I do see in the chat that, chat that Pastor um, AJ Johnson said I'm present. Thank you so much. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If, if you don't mind, I, I would like to uh, say something. Thank you, Dr. Johnson for that. And thank you, uh, Bishop Spellman. Uh, and to uh, Pastor Moore uh, for this uh, opportunity. Uh, Dr. Johnson came to, uh, came to me early this morning and said, Dr. Spellman is doing something really good and would you consider suspending uh, our Bible study on finances to attend this wonderful workshop? And I said, if it's uh, Bishop Spellman, then it's, it's of excellence. So I have no problem doing that. So I just want to thank my church members that are on uh, who uh, st stuck in with the change today all the way from Hartford, Connecticut, uh, all of our members that are on here. So thank you all so much for this opportunity. Um, race is a, is a big thing. Uh, all throughout 
theology school and most theology schools across the country are white institutions that preach about a white Jesus. And uh, for those that know better, uh, know that there were people of color in, in the Bible and representation uh, means everything. And so I appreciate tonight uh, amongst the saints and amongst uh, people who look like me that we had an opportunity to learn about people in the Bible uh, that look like me, particularly Vivica Fox, who played Queen Sheba. I thought that was a, a nice touch there. But um, I just want to say thank you for this opportunity, and God bless uh, all of our church members, Urban Hope Refuge Church. Thank you for coming out and uh, being obedient with the change. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Sister Nancy Rowe. Praise I, him. Um, praise the Lord. Um, those that want to be saved and want to receive the Holy Ghost, Mother Spellman, you have uh, Missionary uh, Jones' number. They can get in touch with her, and we will pray with them to receive the Holy Ghost. We have had two people already to receive the Holy Ghost on a conference call with uh, a few of us altar workers. So if you can't, you know, if you're not near the Spellman's church or anybody's church, all you got to do is uh, get in touch with Mother Spellman. She has Mother Joan's number and we will pray with you. And I believe God will bless as he has these other uh, two people. And this is within a few days that these people have received the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So is that okay with you? Yes, with me it is. Okay. But I have Mother Jones' number. Yeah, we'll you have it. So they can get in touch with her. And um, we have a, a class every Monday night that explains uh, a lot to you. Uh, not as much as Dr. Spellman, but it explains a lot about salvation and so forth and so on. So if you're interested, um, just get in touch with Mother Spellman. Thank you, Jesus. Get in touch with Mother Spellman and she will get in touch with uh, Missionary Jones in Jesus' name. Thank you for the time. God bless you. Uh, my father, he used to be one. If you say you're going to end at a certain time, you have to end at a time. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> this is just a very, um, it's a very joyful, very rewarding. Uh, and God will bless all who reach out. That story, um, Sister Nancy just told, our Sister Dorothy Jones started out with three. I think there's 40 of them who come now and their new <laughs> methods of evangelism reaching people that's what i talked about with the denzel washington so again i want to reiterate uh, the same time next week uh, uh pastor moore and i have agreed that we're going to talk about uh pentecostal uh black history but we want to go on from there so we will send you an invitation like we did before and uh we will, uh, Lord's will, uh, meet you at our regular time on next Wednesday. I want to thank Pastor Moore because usually he has his earlier on Wednesday. And then I see my Moors over there. Both of my mom miss, I miss my uh, Moors, a uh, friend, and uh, they're good to see them. And so uh, we love you. I speak on behalf of my wife and I, we just love people. I told my students last week, you got to have a purpose in life. You're going to read a good book. You ought to read Rick Warren's A Purpose Driven Life. And that's oh, why it's so wound up right now. Yes, if you wait and stop and sit down and think about the pandemic, but we are living under the blood. We can, we can be an example of the uh, protection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We live under the blood. Where do you live? In the secret place of the most high. Amen. That's where we live. We all live in the same address. Amen. Amen. So I thank God for all of you. And uh, Pastor Moore, you, I get, you can dismiss us, I guess. Amen.
All right. So, so once again, Dr. Spellman, we thank you, Macedonia Church, uh, Lady Spellman. Amen. Uh, thank you. RKM GBC, we love you. Morning Church and uh, Pastor Johnson and uh, all the other pastors that may be on. I believe we had some that were on the call. Um, I also want to um, give recognition to my one of my cousins uh, from Burlington, North Carolina, Dr. Rosalind Crisp, amen, who was on this line also. And uh, we just want to thank God for all of them. So we're we taking some you again. Uh, we yes. thank you again, Sister Kelly, for such a wonderful. Sister Kelly, that's right, that's right. That's thank she you. is my blood sister, Dr. Spellman. I, I don't know if you, I don't know if you yeah, recognize her. But, but she is my blood sister, so we thank God for her for singing the um, the national our national anthem. Um, we remember so your mother. She she could sing. But I would say, yeah. by, their fruit, by their fruits, you shall know them. <laughs> Man. So God bless you. Yeah. Amen. I, I want, um, I'm, I'm going to ask Elder Webb while he's um, here uh, with us if he could uh, prepare. I called him a hymnologist earlier today. So I'm going to mm -hmm. ask him if he can prepare, you know, um, one of our hymns that we used to sing as a people uh, from uh, years ago. If he can prepare that, we'll be blessed by that. And also, um, Dr. Celeste, God bless you. Good seeing you. Um, always, mm -hmm. always remember hearing and, and seeing you, well, hearing your name and then uh, putting a face with the name in the Church of Our Lord uh, conventions. Amen, and thank God for you also. So uh, once again, Dr. Spellman, um, we'll, we'll meet back again at 7.30. God and God. Um, we'll, we'll talk about uh, Pentecostalism. Amen, and thank God. And look where he brought us from. Don't forget, there is there is a wonderful series on. I believe it's coming on at nine. I think it's part two. Is it the, uh, the, history, the history of the Black Church? And I think that is, is um, PBS. Mm -hmm. Um, that could tie in with everything and, and with quite a bit that we're talking about. So, so as a people, let's not be ashamed of who we are. Remember, I said uh, slavery was not a part of our history, but it was an interruption. And we thank God that slavery did not kill us. And we are still here. We are great people doing great exploits in Jesus' name. So, Father God, I thank you once again, and we praise you for all the knowledge that we have received. We thank you for this fellowship. What a good thing for the people of God to come together in fellowship. God, and we pray for uh, Dr. Spellman that he will remain fresh, his mind will uh, remain alert, Lord God, and able to teach us what we need to know as we are the people of God moving forward into these last and evil days. God, we thank you for these that are your people who have come tonight, Lord God, to receive from the word. Now, Father mm -hmm. God, we're receiving this knowledge Lord God, to increase our love, to broaden our love, to broaden our ministry of who Christ is. And God, we thank you for it, God. Now, God, as we uh, take our rest on tonight, I pray that you cover us with your precious blood, you protect us, you allow angels to encamp around our homes, Lord God. And those of us that will be in the path of the storm, God, we pray that we will not lose any power. Lord God, we pray that our homes will be safe, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And we pray for all those uh, saints and uh, people of God and people throughout the state of Texas and all the other areas who have been hit hard with these winter storms. Lord God, we continue to lift up the body of Christ. We lift up the people of God. We lift up those who are suffering through this pandemic. God, we <laughs> pray strength in these times, God. So God, as we depart from this place, we say, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. God bless you all. <laughs> Amen. In Jesus' name. God bless you all. God bless you, everyone. Have a wonderful night, a peaceful night. In Jesus' name and stay safe. You yes. too. God bless you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Amen. Bye bye. God bless you. We enjoyed the lesson. Thank you so Good much. Night. Thank you. Night. Thank you, Dr. Spellman. Greetings. God bless you, everybody. Thank, Thank you all. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you. God bless everyone. God bless. Take some time to write out your questions for next week. <laughs> That's right.
Thank you, Bishop Spellman. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Joe. God Thank bless you. you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Blessings to everyone. Good night. Good night. Hello, crew. Please. Good night. I mean, why are you saying like that?